Verse number 40 says, if they shall confess their iniquity. It starts with the acknowledgement, with the confession, God, I've done wrong. That is the very important first step to getting right with God. You can take, and kids too, and, and, and this, this strikes home, there's going to be so many correlations, I'm not going to keep bringing it up, but kids can go through and take punishment. They know they've done wrong, they can take a punishment, but if they're not going to acknowledge that they've actually done wrong, it's not going to take very long for them to do it again and to require to be disciplined again and again and again. Because they first need to realize and admit, I've done wrong. Which this also correlates with just salvation. People need to understand that they've done wrong and deserve a punishment before they could even put their faith in a savior. Well, what do you need to be saved from? What do you need a savior for if you don't realize you've done wrong? So on all fronts when it comes to forgiveness, it's critical to be able to, to understand or to confess that I've done wrong. Now, when it comes to your soul salvation, you know, you don't need to list off every single sin that you've done. You just need to realize, hey, I need a Savior. I've done wrong, and I need a Savior. But when we're getting right with God, this is kind of a little bit more specific things. You, you get into sin, you want God to forgive you for something that you've done because you don't want God to discipline you, to punish you for what you've done. You've already made a mistake. You're going to be like, God, I shouldn't have done thus and so. God, I'm sorry. I, this was a sin. Maybe you didn't realize it was a sin. Maybe you did and you did it anyways. But, but now you're saying, God, I've, I've come around. I'm not going to be stiff-necked on this. This is a sin. So you confess your iniquity. So God says here in verse 40, If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, and that also they have walked contrary unto me, and that I also have walked contrary unto them, and have brought them into the land of their enemies, if then... Their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity. Then will I remember my covenant with Jacob, and also my covenant with Isaac, and also my covenant with Abraham. Will I remember, and I will remember the land. So he's saying they have to not only confess their iniquity, but their hearts need to be humbled. As I said, that's what God looks at the heart. And it's not, so what that means is it's not just this fake thing where you're saying you're sorry you're saying oh i shouldn't have done that god because in your head you know that it was wrong your heart needs to be humbled your heart needs to be brought low and actually understand and feel and know that is really wrong not i'm gonna say it's wrong because i don't want god to be hard on me but in my heart i'm still gonna want to keep doing and and going <laughs> going that direction when you know it's wrong you want, he wants your heart to be humbled and then to accept the punishment. The punishment that God's given you, say, you know what? You just need to accept this. Because then you have the full realization that what I did was wrong, I'm humbled, I'm sorry, and that, yep, whatever you bring my way, God, I deserve it. Yeah. This, is, this is what I deserve. It's just, I'm sorry. That is a true repentant heart and finally of attitude of being able to accept own it, live up to it. I did it, God. I'm sorry. I'm not doing it again. And I'm done with this. He says, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob. And then, and then he'll start the restoration process. Once you've already acknowledged everything else, then it continues on. 